Hi everyone, welcome back. Let's finish up section one two with absolute value inequalities. So it'll be a mix of absolute value with an inequality symbol. So there's two different cases and they end up a little bit different. So if we have an absolute value of x is less than a, uh, if and only if, so it'll be true if and only if x is in between negative a and a. The idea is, remember, um, absolute value is distance. So since we just have x, it's like x minus 0. So the distance between x and 0 is less than a. So we can kind of go a in either direction. So that's a nice visual of what this is. So it'll be in between negative a and a, right? I could have a positive distance or a negative distance in either, so it'll be true in either direction. For greater than, it's a little bit different. It creates two pieces, right? It's saying the distance between x and 0 is greater than a. So it can be bigger than a, right? Or it could be smaller than negative a. Because like negative 5 would be the same as 5 in terms of distance, right? Negative 6 and 6 would be the same in terms of distance. So that one creates two inequalities. x is greater than a or x is less than negative a. So you'll see the symbol flips for the negative one, kind of coming from the idea of dividing by negatives. Um, but I really like the visual. I think the visual helps us see that. And it will be the same rules for the or equal cases. So let's try some examples. So we have the absolute value of x minus 5 is greater than 3. Let's interpret this before we start. Remember, absolute value is distance, so it's saying the distance between x and 5 is greater than 3. All right, so here's 5. Maybe x is here, right? This distance is larger than 3. And it could be the other way, right? x could be over here. That would also be larger than 3. So we could maybe solve it visually, but I think it'll be easier to just use equations. So this will be the second case because it's a greater than. So it'll be x minus 5 is greater than 3, or, or means we can be in either interval, or x minus 5 is less than negative 3. Right, because less than negative 3 would be bigger distances. So we'll go ahead and solve both of these. Um, they're linear, so we don't have to do that zero rule. We can just solve them, right? They're linear, which makes them easier. We can just follow regular rules, right? Remember last section, quadratics, rational, we had to set one side equal to zero. Um, we don't have to do that for linear, which is nice. So we get x is greater than 8 for the first one. Or let's go ahead and add 5 to both sides on the second one. Or x is, what, less than 2? So we'll put that in set notation. Remember those funny little braces, x, where, the long line means where, where x is greater than 8 or x is less than 2. So that's my solution set. Go ahead and draw a number line. That'll help us write interval notation. So we can use open circles or parentheses. You'll see the book kind of switches between both. Um, so open greater than eight. So that'll be eight to infinity with an open circle, less than two, well, less than will be on the left side, so we'll go to negative infinity. So if you prefer interval notation, you can also write the solution as negative infinity to 2, union 8 to infinity. So two different ways of writing the solution. So we'll try two more of these, and then that'll be the end of this video. And visually, if we want to write 5 is right here, right? Those are bigger distances than 3. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Cool. Let's
Let's try the last two examples. Um, so this one's a little bit harder to interpret as distance because it doesn't have that subtraction. Um, but we can still solve it using similar methods. So since this is a less than or equal, we're going to go ahead and say negative 6x is in between negative 18 and 18. We're going to keep the negative because the negative is inside the absolute value. It'll still work. We can actually solve it without the negative. We'll get this. We'll see. So let's see what happens if I keep it versus not keep it. But we are going to keep it for now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and divide by negative 6x. Or negative 6, sorry. It's like a three-sided equation. Um, so negative 18 over negative 6 gives me 3. Because I divided by a negative, we're going to flip it. So it'll be greater than or equal x, and then greater than or equal to negative 3. Which is actually the same as negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. It's like reading it backwards. So why don't you try um, pause the video and see if you can write it in solution set and interval set. Interval notation. Solution set, we'll say x where it's x is in between negative 3 and 3. Or we can say negative 3 to 3, and we're going to use brackets because of the, the or equal. And that's my solution. For those of you asking, did I have to keep the negative in this case? Let's see. So the absolute value of negative 6x, um, we basically learned we can split up products. So the absolute value of negative 6 and negative and x would be the same as 6 and the absolute value of x, which is actually the same as the absolute value of 6x. So it actually would have worked if we had changed it to just positive 6x because they have the same value. So be sure to let me know if you have questions. I'm going to try one more of these. Um, in this next example, that I do have to keep the negative because it's representing subtraction, not just a factor. So let's go ahead and try the last one. Um, so we have the absolute value of 2 minus 5x over 3 is greater than or equal to 5. So it's a greater than, so we're going to say the distance is greater than or equal to 5, or the distance is less than or equal to negative 5, which would be bigger absolute values, right? Negative 6 has a bigger absolute value than negative 5, which is why this is allowed. Um, they're linear again. Even though it's a fraction, the denominator is a constant. So it's just a linear function, so we don't have to worry about those zero rules. So we can just solve the traditional, solve the normal way. I'll say the old way. Let's, we don't need to use number lines. But remember, if it's rational or quadratic from the previous section, we are not going to solve traditional methods. So let's go ahead and times by 3. I'll just do both, just since that step's pretty similar. And then we'll solve them one at a time. So 2 minus 5x is greater than or equal to 15, or 2 minus 5x is less than or equal to negative 15. And again, linear, so I can just add and subtract. Don't have to worry about zero rules. So minus 2, minus 2. Negative 5x is greater than or equal to 13. And divide by negative 5. So x is less than or equal to, right, because I divided by negative, negative 13 fifths. We don't really like mixed numbers in pre-calc, but maybe I'll think about the mixed number just for the sake of the number line. Um, if I divide, I get two, negative 2 and 3 fifths, 
I'm never going to use mixed numbers. That's just to help me find it on the number line. So we are going to leave it as thir negative 13 fifths. We'll come to the number line in a second. Um, let's go ahead and repeat that. So I'm going to minus 2, minus 2. So negative 5x is less than or equal to negative 17. We're going to go ahead and divide by negative 5 again. Similar process, right? Just different numbers. So we're going to flip it because we divided by a negative. And we get 17 fifths. x is greater than or equal to 17 fifths. Again, as a mixed number, what is that like? So we'll do 17 divided by 5. We get 3 and 2 fifths. We don't have to draw the number line, um, but it's nice for those of us who are a little more visual. So it can basically be on either one of these lines. Um, so let's see. Negative 2 and 3 fifths, we have the or equal, so we'll use a bracket or a closed circle. So 2 and 3 fifths, we'll just approximate less than to the left. Um, 17 fifths would be a little more than 3 and greater than, so we'll shade to the right. And so this will help us write the solution. So we have the solution set, x where x is less than or equal to thir negative 13 fifths, or x is greater than or equal to 17 fifths, or interval notation. Oops. Negative infinity up to negative 13 fifths. Please leave it as a fraction. Those will be much more useful in calculus. Up to 17 fifths to infinity. And we're using um, the brackets because of the or equal. And that's it. I'll post some Khan Academy videos for those of you who want some more examples.